We've now found over 4,000 exoplanets, a rapidly increasing array of strange alien worlds. And the more we uncover, the weirder they get. They don't act at all like what we're seeing in our solar system. There are planets out there interacting. There are planets dive bombing their sun, gigantic planets orbiting really close in, everything in every kind of combination you can possibly imagine. One alien world truly stands out. This is the planet from hell. When we examine the atmosphere of this planet, what we find is liquid iron. The iron is heated up so much it's been vaporized and it's falling out of the sky like rain. But why is this planet so much more extreme than the ones in our solar system? What this is telling us is that the universe is really good at making lots of planets that are wildly different than the one we live on. Outside of our apparently stable and calm solar system, it is the wild, wild west out in the cosmos, where crazy stuff is happening completely unchecked. WASP-76b is 640 light years away in the Pisces constellation. At first, this planet looks like nothing out of the ordinary. WASP-76b orbits a star just like our sun, which is really reassuring in a universe which is full of the unfamiliar. WASP-76b is a gas giant, a bit like Jupiter in our solar system. But its location makes a big difference. You take a star similar to ours, you take a planet similar to Jupiter, but instead of parking it in the outer solar system, you put it really, really, really close to the star. Jupiter is almost 500 million miles away from the sun. WASP-76b is just 3 million miles from its star. And that's what makes this planet a hot Jupiter. Temperatures on WASP-76b exceed 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, creating one of the most extreme environments in the universe. If I were fortunate enough to be able to go and visit this world, I would have to take a lot of precautions because it is essentially a hellscape on that planet. The heat is absolutely insane. There is nothing like it in our solar system. The fact that it's so close to its star has another consequence. WASP-76b's spin is locked to its star. The gravity from the star will grip onto the planet, slow its rotation over time if it had any to start with, and lock it so that one face always faces toward the star. This gravitational grip is called tidal locking. We're used to the idea of tidally locking with our own moon. We only ever see one side of the moon. The far side of the moon continues to face space. There are consequences for being a tidally locked planet, and not all of them are good. That can set up some pretty extreme weather conditions, very hot on the daytime side and extremely cold on the nighttime side. In 2020, we took a closer look at the atmosphere between the day and night side of the planet. This twilight zone has plenty of rain, but here it rains molten iron. I mean, this thing has iron rain. How lazy is that if you were writing a sci-fi novel? Oh, let's make some iron rain. But this is reality. It is hot enough to vaporize iron and make it rain. When I grew up watching sci-fi on TV and, and reading novels, There'd always be some planet where there was some strange condition. Oh, iron rains out of the sky. And I'd be like, that's ridiculous. And now what I found out is that nature is way nuttier than anything we could have thought of. How do you get vaporized iron? Well, most materials can exist in different states. So think about water, right? Water can be a solid when it's ice. And then when you heat it up, it becomes water, the liquid part of water. And then if you heat it up more, it becomes steam, like out of a kettle. And this is true of every chemical element. So for iron, if you heat it even more up, it becomes a gas. So you really can have clouds of iron vapor condensing and raining liquid iron. These nightmare weather conditions are a direct result of WASP-76b's proximity to its star. WASP-76b is so close to its star that its star is superheating its atmosphere. So the upper atmosphere is heated and rises. 
The atmosphere on the day side reaches over 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The planet's night side is cooler at 2,730 degrees Fahrenheit. This difference in temperature sets up spectacular wind streams. One of the really cool things about this brand new class of planets we found is discovering weather we've never seen before. These hot Jupiters have these equatorial jets of wind that are supersonic, traveling at thousands of miles per hour, and that wind is pulling the rain around to the night side. The air on the hot side expands because it's being heated and will flow over to the other side. So you get these torrential winds blowing that hot air to the cooler side. If there is vaporized iron, gaseous iron, in the atmosphere on the hot side, it will blow over to the cooler side. On Earth, the fastest recorded winds have reached speeds in excess of 250 miles an hour. On WASP 76B, winds hit speeds in excess of 11,000 miles an hour. Strong enough to move millions of tons of iron vapor to the planet's night side where it undergoes a dramatic change. It's cooler there, can't be maintained as a gas, so it condenses and becomes a liquid and then rains out. There are clouds coming up and forming and then rain is falling, but it's iron. It's iron vapor, it's iron rain. It would be spectacular to see in that brief moment you have before you vaporize too. <laughs> you might think that having clouds of iron rain is WASP-76b's strangest feature. But astronomers are even more puzzled by the location of this gas giant. When you look at the planets in our solar system, you can divide them into gas giants like Jupiter and rocky planets like the Earth. In our solar system, rocky planets are close to the sun and gas giants are farther away. But in exosystems, the positions of different kinds of planets are all messed up. We're finding Jupiter-sized planets super close to their stars instead of in the outer parts of the solar system. And we're finding rocky planets really close to stars and packed in really tight and weird configurations. These planets orbiting close to their stars survive being blasted with intense radiation. They're taking part in the ultimate endurance challenge. But not all worlds are so tough. Some are so light and delicate they're barely there at all. Are these weird puffballs even planets? <laughs>